Hey, howdy everybody, what is up, how's it going? Welcome to episode 2 of CoreyCast. I still hate the name, I still think it's cringe, but I'm gonna keep it because it kind of works, so deal with it. I am finally going to talk about all the albums that I have heard since the last Cory cast, which I'm looking here on my channel, was February 28th, so it has been a little bit since that. So I'm going to talk about everything that I've heard since then, how my opinions have changed, if they have changed, what I would rank these albums today on my new ranking scale that I've got, so you can see that. Let's get into this. I'm very excited to do this. This might be a longer video but I think it'll be a good one. So let's do this. The AC is currently broken in my house. Guy's coming out to fix it later today though, so that'll be fun. But I am currently sweating and I've got my fan right over here next to me. So if you hear some weird hissing in the background, that's turned up to like the max. And then I also have an icy just to stay a little cooler, you know? Yummy, yummy Coke icy. Okay. So since my last video, I think the last thing I talked about was Altered State. After I listened to that, I still love that album. That's I've listened to it more since then. I love it so much. I think it's one of the best prog albums of all time. Like I said in my Caligula's Horse video, I would rank that number two on the top three prog albums that I would that are that I've heard on this channel. Number one is Contortionist Language. Number two, Altered State, and then number three, I said was Caligula's Horse, uh, Charcoal Grace, which might be bumped up. I might have to switch two and three because I've listened to Charcoal Grace more. I'll talk about this more uh, when I get there, but I've listened to Charcoal Grace more and I think that album is a masterpiece now. Tesseract, Altered State, is also a masterpiece. That's how I would rank it now. Amazing album, great melodies, great atmosphere. It's just super solid prog. And even though I sometimes get tired of certain kinds of prog, I, I don't know, dude. It's just, it's so good. When it's this good, I love it. After that, I listened to uh, Blinding Faith by Knocked Loose. That's a single. I'll talk about that whole album a bit later. But then after that, I heard probably maybe now my favorite Thornhill song, Obsession. And this song was very divisive from what I've seen in the community. There were some people who loved it. There were some people that didn't. I think this song is like a solid 9, 9.5. It is possibly my favorite Thornhill song. I think it surpasses Lily and the Moon for me, which is a hard feat, but I think it does. <clears throat> yeah, me drinking this icy is not the best idea for me like going to talk for an, an hour now or so. <laughs> I think it passes up Lily and the Moon for me, actually. It is just that good. It is amazing. It's mainly due to the chorus and that riff that that goes so hard especially the little like groovy breakdown part when he smashes the the bath in the music video it's so good it's just it's got everything that i love about new thornhill and i hope they continue in this direction because i adore their new direction even viper room i think is way better than i even initially thought and i liked that song on first listen but i think it's even better now after that, I listened to Dealer, Red Teeth, and Glass Preacher. I still have yet to actually listen to that Dealer album, but that's coming up. That's going to be one of the next albums I do. Might be the next one. Uh, no, I really want to listen to Relica, so maybe I'll do Relica than Dealer, because I've been really wanting to do Relica much more than Dealer, actually. I'm excited about Dealer, but like Relica has my heart. They are <laughs> such a good band. I love the, the EP... Um, I don't know. I, I don't know what I am. Is that it? I'm, I'm hiccuping, guys. I'm sorry. Um, is is it? I don't know what I am. What I am, or is I don't know who I am. I don't know what I am. I, I was right. There there's six songs, uh, but it, it's 23 minutes. I would say it's an EP. Oh no no no. Okay, all right. Spotify says it's an EP. It showed up as album when I searched for it for some reason. But yeah, this is so good. That EP was so good. I'm super hyped to listen to their new album, which is called Secrets of the Future, if I'm not mistaken. But that'll be the next album that I do after I do the Patreon quest. Patreon request uh, Monuments the Amanuensis. I hope I'm saying that right. Anyway, back to Dealer. I really enjoy these two songs. Dealer as a band is not something that I come back to all the time. They're kind of in the same vein of Knocked Loose for me. 
where they're fun at certain times in small doses, but overall they're not really something I enjoy really like a lot. I really like listening to it. It's an experience. Like you kind of just you 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 go hard and you mosh and you break stuff. And <laughs> that's kind of how it is when you listen to them. But overall, I don't think they're one of my favorites, but I really, really love what they do when I'm in the mood for it. So they're kind of like a situational love for me. And I was definitely in the mood for it when I listened to those two songs. And those two songs are great. So I'm hyped to hear the rest of the album. Then I checked out <clears throat> the, the full album of Johnny Booth, Moments Elsewhere. Now, this album is strange for me. This album kind of sits in a weird spot because overall, I think it's really good. However, I wouldn't put it as like an amazing album. It's kind of in the mid tier for me, just purely because it's not as memorable as I wish it was. There are some parts of it that kind of sound samey to me, and the more I listen to it, I don't latch on to it as much as I thought I would on first listen. There's still some songs that are incredible. Like what's the song that goes like do 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 that one is like incredible. The uh full tilt. I think that's it. Let me just do it. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. Full Tilt is great. Full Tilt is probably my favorite song on the whole album. <clears throat> but overall, I don't really remember any of these other songs. I mean, I'm looking at the album right now and I, I oops, knocked my, I don't know if you, uh, if you heard that, I just slid my chair arm. <laughs> Full Tilt is my favorite song. I don't really remember any of the other songs. It's also been like a month, month and a half since the last time I checked it out. So maybe it just needs a few more listens. And I think it's good, and I think they have a lot of potential, but overall, I think I would put this one in Goes Hard on my little tier thing, and I think it has potential to maybe move up after a few more listens. Maybe this one is a long grower, but as it sits for me, I don't quite like it as some of the other albums that I've heard. Then I heard Pangea Survivor's Guilt. I heard that song on stream. That was the next video I put out. This song is it's still a 10 out of 10. I haven't listened to it in a while though, but the few times that I did, it's really, really good. I don't have much else to say other than that. If you watch the video, I talk a little bit more about it, but that is for sure one of the best songs I've ever heard. The progression of it, the different sections, it's unbelievable. It's almost crazy how good that song is. And But I haven't heard more from Pangea, and I would really like to. So maybe, I mean, if you guys want me to hear more, I have an album tier on my stream. I have a song tier. You can go request an album or song for me to listen to if you want me to hear more of that. But, you know, that's all just, that's for fun. That's optional. All right. Then the next album that I checked out was Grayscale Season, Feel Something New. This album, I think, is really, really good. I really, really liked it. I think now, however, I like it a little less than I did on first listen. I still think it's a good album, but overall, I think the songs as a whole are less memorable a little bit than some of the songs off of Do You Like Violence. That album, I think, is is amazing. That album is a near masterpiece, in my opinion. I love Do You Like Violence. There's so much variety on that. I just wish there was a little bit more variety on Feel Something New, just purely because like on repeat listens, I didn't like it quite as much but it was still a very good album. I still think uh, Still Hurts is an incredible song. I still think that has a place in my top songs of the year, but I don't think any of the other tracks quite reach the heights of Still Hurts. And I know people have sung the praises of certain songs, like, uh, what's the, one second, I'm, I'm pulling it up on, on Spotify. <clears throat> I know people sung the praises of songs like uh, like Custom Painted, uh, It Consumes Me, but honestly, I don't really like those songs as much as some people do. And yeah, okay, Dolore is great. Two has a great outro, but overall, most of the album, I think, is not quite as good. I would put that in Goes Hard tier. That's about where I would rank this now after months of listening to it and kind of digesting it and thinking about it then <laughs> then we get to uh agent fresco destrier if you have not heard this album what are you doing with your life 
if you have not blessed your ears with this incredible masterpiece, near perfect album, almost flawless in every single way, almost, what are you doing? This is almost as close to perfection as I think an album can get. It's not quite there in just some little tiny parts, and that's purely because Mastad Nudervatn is my favorite album of all time. I think it's perfect. I think there is literally nothing wrong with that album. I think every millisecond is earned and well thought out. But there are just some songs on Agent Fresco, Destrier, that I, I skip sometimes on subsequent listens. Sorry, my dad uh, interrupted a little bit. Anyway, there's, yeah, there's some songs on there that I think are a little bit maybe kind of skips on repeat listens. I'll sometimes skip Citadel just because it's it's quick i'll sometimes skip the last half of uh autumn oh no way i just forgot what this song was called uh <laughs> what's it what's it called autumn red uh because that song has like the second half of it is just like the octave jumps it's really cool uh but it's a little bit in that minimalist prog kind of space but it's really really sick the rest of the album though i i will not skip it's so so good but i just think those two tracks are are just kind of like if i'm not listening to the full album i'll skip those but every other song is incredible wait for me is one of the best songs i've ever heard in my entire life bemoan let them see us into dark water that transition pyre howls uh, dude every single song is just so unbelievably fire that album is a masterpiece that i would put in masterpiece uh i can't remember if i said it two minutes ago or not but that is my fit what i need to move why can't you see my laundry basket Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> That's always there. You guys just can't see it because <laughs> it's underneath the TV. All right. Anyway, <laughs> that is a masterpiece. It's my second favorite album of all time, right behind Mastad and Nudervatn. I have them both. I have both the vinyls right up there on my wall. In fact, I'm going to get them right now. One second. I'll show you. Here they are. I got them both here. We got Destria right here. And then I got Mastad and Nudervatn, and they sit right next to each other on my wall, right next to... Ugh. Right next to every sound has a color in the Valley of Night, which I'll get to as well. <laughs> but that album is incredible. After that, I listened to Slice the Cake, Odyssey to the West. And with this album, I'm a little bit torn on it because I think it's really cool. The whole concept of it, the idea of it, it feels like a movie when you listen to it. It's sick. It's just a little long and it's kind of a little bit not quite as good on repeat listens for me. Um, although, overall, I think it's it's kind of gotten better, but it hasn't gotten better, if that makes sense at all. I don't know if that if that makes sense for what I'm explaining, but there are parts of it that I think are much much better on repeat listens. Like some of the some of the sections where I kind of complained about it dragging a little bit, I think are much better on repeat listens. But I think overall the album as a whole, I still think it's about as like about where it was when I first listened to it. It's just not really my thing. And I think it's really cool as a concept, but however, I just don't really like it that much overall. I would put that in goes hard tier. People have uh, come in my comments and been like, how do you not think this is a masterpiece? And I'm like, I just don't. That's just me. It's really cool. Feels like a movie, but I just don't think it's quite as good as some other longer thematic theme albums. Then we get to Gradients. Gradients is one of my favorite new finds this year. They are incredible. Uh, it's it's two of them. It's uh, Jacob and oh, what's his name? I forgot his name. Gavin. That's right. Jacob and Gavin. I didn't even have to look anything up. I started to look it up and then I remembered his name was Gavin. I keep wanting to say Austin for some reason. I don't know why. I have no clue why I think Jacob and Austin. Is that like a duo? Is, is Jacob and Austin a thing in, in something? I have no idea. Anyway, yeah. I found Gradients and they are incredible. It's the, it's the two of them and they did... Uh, three or four songs that I listened to and then they put out like an EP and so the EP is called Iron Sight please go listen to it it's incredible it's so good it's such a good EP it was my EP of the year until we got Mirar and uh <laughs> what was the what's the poetic Edda 
until we got those two, that was my EP of the year. I think this is going to make my top album slash EP of the year list, but those two EPs just came out and absolutely just floored me, but I'll get, get to those in a second. Anyway, Gradients, their whole deal is like their blackened rap metal, and it's super sick. It works so well. It's really, really good. Their songs, especially Love Me and Lie, I think Love Me and Lie is their best song. Their songs are super, super emotional and like really well done. Like listen to the lyrics, follow along with those lyrics, listen to the music. It's really good. The only thing that I would say for this that I would kind of bring it down, or that kind of brings it down a little bit for me is that the songs are short. I just want more. Sometimes they feel almost unfinished because they feel like they should, they end before they should finish. Just some of them. And I just want more from them. I know they can do more, so I'm super excited to see what they, where they go from here. They've got some more members, so they're a full five-piece, I think, band now, which is incredible. I'm so excited to see what comes from that. They're probably my favorite, one of my favorite new finds of this year, and I am super glad that I was there since day one, and I get to check this out. Very, very excited. Can't wait. Amazing group. Go listen to their stuff. I would give their Iron Sight EP banger tier it's really really good it's so close but i would give it banger so close to masterpiece then i get to mariton unseen color this was a marius request this was i think uh, i think he did a double request with destrier and mariton destrier is now one of my favorite albums of all time mariton was an insane grower album I didn't really like it all that much on first listen. I think the first few tracks were great, but the rest of it was kind of meh. Then as I re-listened to it, I loved it so much more. This one took a while to grow on me, but it has really grown on me. Really grown on me. It's very, very good. I would put it in banger tier now. This is incredible. Overall, as just a grower album, it's one of my favorite grower albums, maybe of all time because I love albums that you listen to on the first listen and you're kind of like, this is okay. And then it, it grows and you just really, really like it. I get that melody from the first track where it's like, we're waiting for the one thing that cannot be found, something for the world to revolve around. I get that stuck in my head all the time. It's very, very good. Same with Boltzmann Brain. That song is incredible. Those might be my top two tracks on the album. They're really, really good. Please go listen to that album if you haven't. It's incredible. It's much more of like a pop rock album, but it's still super, super sick. It's got some great melodies. Very good. Very, very good, I have to say. All right, let's move on. So after that, uh, my next video after that was actually Disembodied Siren slash Senestia, the Poetic Edda. I'm going to hold off on that until I get to when I react to the full EP. But after that, I listened to Cat's Claw, Become the Blade. This song was insane. I have not listened to it since I heard it the first time though. So I just have not really had the desire to go back and listen to it. So I'm going to wait for an album or EP or something where this comes out on because it was really, really sick. But I think overall it wasn't too memorable for me personally. I like Namesake much more. I think Namesake is their best song. And I've listened to, I think, almost their whole discography. I might have missed a song or two somewhere along the line. But I think Namesake is their best track. I love that little like breakdown at the end where it slows down. It's so cool. But uh, Become the Blade was a little bit kind of mid. And I don't know if that's just because I haven't listened to it since then. So I haven't really had time to give my opinion time to change. But I've had to listen to so much music. And this has just kind of like been pushed to the wayside where I'm like, I want to listen to this but i have so much other music that i want to listen to and loop and this one's just kind of been like off to the side i think it'll hit much more in an album context though so i'm gonna hold off on my opinions on that until i get to the full album then my next full album after that was unprocessed and everything in between uh wow this album really really shocked me i was not expecting much I didn't know what I was expecting. I was expecting kind of like deathcore, I think. And it ended up being Polyphia if they were much better than they are. I think they're really good, but the lack of vocals and the over-focus on Tim Henson's whatever he does, his style, just brings it down a little bit for me, like Polyphia as a whole. But Unprocessed takes that format and they bring it to the next level. They bring in like 
more song structures, better melodies. When you have like, hell is a place within my chest. Or like, will you carry my heart around when it's old and gray? You've got like, Glass and Hell and other songs off of that album are just incredible. I think this album is a masterpiece. I have listened to this so much since it came out. It's probably... It, it, this would have been one of my favorite albums the year it came out if I had heard it. I think it was just last year, was it? Or am I crazy? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, this would have been one of my favorite albums from then if I had heard it then, but I didn't, unfortunately. But at the end of the year, I'm going to have two separate videos. I'm going to have uh, best albums of 2024, and then I'm going to have best albums that I heard in 2024 that aren't from this year, but that I've heard. So this is going to be on there for sure. It's going to be high on that list. Very excited for that. I love this album so much. I think it takes that Polyphia sound and by putting it around better song structures and making it overall more harmonically interesting, I think it, it's like it's Polyphia in their final form. And they even had Tim Henson featured on one of the tracks, which is kind of weird because I can't tell which is Tim Henson and which isn't. So it's a little bit strange. And I think that track is one of the weaker tracks in the overall album but i still love it it's it's such a good album i think this is a masterpiece now after months of listening to it it's incredible it it, it blew me away from like zero expectations and i i love it it's so good next up the next one <laughs> the next one i heard was night versus every sound has a color in the valley of night now uh, this album, well, let me just show you. I only buy vinyls for masterpieces. And I think this says enough. Oh, you can see my reflection. Ha ha ha, that's me. I think this set, I think, I think this says all that you need to know about this. This is my album of the year. I need to sit it down. I didn't put my other vinyls away, so I don't want to shatter them when I throw it on my bed. Um, this is my album of the year so far. It has just blown me away in every possible way. I think it is the best instrumental album ever. And I haven't heard too many instrumental albums, and I've heard some counter arguments from other people, which, sure, might be might be better. Other albums might be better. But for me, this is my favorite instrumental album that I have heard. I think it does so much with an instrumental album where most instrumental albums that I've heard will just focus on the instrumental part of it and not really have a melody kind of, but it'll have a bunch of cool instrumentals or different sections and still be really interesting. But something that this album does is you can feel where the vocals would be if it had vocals, except on Glitching Prisms, because Glitching Prisms has vocals, and that's my favorite track in the album. But all the other songs, you can feel where the melody would be, and you can hear guitar leads that basically work as a melody in these songs. And I think that's why I love it so much, because it still has melody and harmony and it still has sections that I can latch onto. I'm singing the guitar parts when I listen to it in the car. It's so, so, so good. It is a masterpiece. It is a easy 10 out of 10 masterpiece album. I just, I can't stress enough how good this album is. And if you have not heard it, please go listen to it, please. I don't think anything can top this for album of the year. Although there have been a few already that have gotten close that are album of the year contenders, but I still think by the end of the year, I might like this album the most out of all of them. Please go check this out. It's such an incredible album and Night Versus deserves all the success they've gotten. I read in that video, I read an Instagram post from them about how they've been music, they've been, they've been music, they've been making music together uh, since they were 12, I think. And the dog's freaking out because I think the, the AC repairman's here anyway. They've been making music together since they were 12, I think, unless I'm crazy. And this is kind of the culmination of everything that they've learned over the years. And you can tell it is such a well-crafted album. Please go listen to that, please. After that, then, I heard Opeth for the first time. I heard Ghost of Perdition. I have not gone back to this album, really, since then. And I think it's mostly just because I don't really like it. I'm scared to say that. I don't really like it all that much. Wait, did I say album or song? I listened to the song. 
I'm forgetting what I said 10, 10 seconds ago. Okay, guys, see another documented case of my short term memory loss. Anyway, I don't really like I think it's really, really cool, but I'm just not the biggest fan of that older style, if that makes sense. That's just my thing. I'm just not the biggest fan of that. But I still think it's really good for what it is. And it's kind of one of those things where like other artists, other albums do it better. But this is it's very influential. And I can see this being a lot of like your favorite band's favorite band kind of kind of type thing. So that's that's how I feel about this. Then I did uh, I did a video on or I put the highlight video out for Contortionist Clairvoyant. I bumped my mic, sorry. That was one that got blocked on YouTube. I think I had to pu publish the full thing on my Patreon. But anyway, Clairvoyant. This is an album that I also feel mixed about, and I'm sorry to Contortionist fans, but I like this album. <laughs> I really do like this album, actually. I don't think it's as good as Language, but I think it's still really, really good. It's grown on me a lot since I first listened to it. I did not like Exoplanet. I still do not like Exoplanet. I've given it a few more listens. I'm sorry that I don't like Exoplanet, but it's too chaotic for me. Clairvoyant is a really nice middle ground between the chaos of Exoplanet and the beautiful melodies and harmonies of Language, and I think it really rides that line pretty well, but I still prefer Language over this by a long shot. And while I don't hate this album, I just think it falls flat in quite a few areas for me, but I still overall really like it. I would put this album in Goes Hard on my little ranking thing. It's still on the positive side of things, but it's a little lower positive. I don't quite like it as much as, uh, as some other people do. Uh, but that I think part of that comes from me not really being a lyric guy. I don't care if the lyrics are emotional or if they're good or bad. I, I really don't care. The lyrics do basically almost nothing for me in most songs. What does it do melodically? What does it do harmonically? And I know the story of the album now. I know how emotional it is. But I just think some of the melodies and the harmonies don't hold up for me personally as much as some of the other albums do that I've heard, some of the other prog albums. Certainly not as much as Language, which was it's incredible. That's one of the best prog albums ever. Clairvoyant, still pretty good. It just falls flat a little bit for me. All right, <clears throat> then we get to Time the Valuator, How Fleeting, How Fragile. This album, dude, this is another insane grower for me. This one took a while for me to get, really. I still don't think it's amazing, but I love it so much more than I did on my first listen. I've listened to this so, 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 so much. I keep coming to this a lot. I'll be in my car and I'm just like, I want to listen to something. What should I listen to? And I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to listen to Time the Valuator, How Fleeting, How Fragile, and I'm going to listen to that again. And I really, really like it now. I think it is one of the better albums that I've heard this year. I don't think it's perfect. I still think it has a little bit of those things that I don't like that I talked about in the video. And I think those are still valid. I still believe most of what I said in that video. However, I like it much more. It's grown on me so much. When you get to like, by the time the earth is set, or whatever, that whole like beginning part into like the first few tracks are just so, so, so strong. Uh, I'm going to look this up right now because I forget what's the what's my favorite elusive reasons elusive reasons is my favorite track on the whole album it's incredible the whole thing is just so good and then the ending with the how fleeting is a moment in time how fragile is the essence of life is that the lyrics I think that's it yeah how fleeting is a moment in time yes I got it. how fleeting is a moment in time how fragile is the essence of life yeah I got it I was correct when you get to that part of the ending, it's so beautiful. Overall, I think it works really well as an album, and I'm going to put this in banger tier. I love it much more than I did, but I still think it just just falls flat a little bit in some areas for me. Then I heard Calandra's single, State of the World. This song is incredible. It's maybe Calandra's most emotional album. Not album, sorry. I can't speak today, guys. Maybe Calandra's most emotional song. It is so beautiful. The message is beautiful, especially with everything going on in the world today. There's all this conflict, all this war, all this just chaos. And especially the, the line, like, isn't it peace all of us want? Or I think that's the line. That one hits so hard. Like, we all want peace and there's just so much chaos. 
and it just it can't be peaceful and it's just ah. but this song still hits it's so good i would rate this single track like a nine 9.5 out of 10 very very good very solid super good song love calandra go listen to their album the line if you haven't that's an amazing album and yeah and then i did i did a couple theory clip episodes that's when i started that uh, those, I, I will, I will start doing more, um, probably this weekend I'll, I'll record another one. I'm sorry. It, I had promised I would not get behind on that. And then that's exactly what I did. I'm very, very sorry. Uh, and then I dropped my silent planet, super bloom piano cover, piano slash vocal cover. Go check that out, please. If you haven't, that one was super cool. It's up on Spotify as well. I'm super excited to do more. I'm planning to do, is it really you? by loathe as my next cover but i'm also planning a little something special for 1k subs which i'm almost there if you're in my discord you probably saw what it was if you're not in my discord get in my discord link in the description go check it out we have a lot of fun there it's a small community but we're like a little family it's very very cool go check that out please love my discord family y'all are great love you guys so much uh but yeah i got something planned for 1k a cover <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of a stupid idea but i think it's actually gonna turn out really really cool then after that after i put out my super bloom cover i heard mirar now i'd heard mirar before but i heard specifically deluge and takata and when i tell you that these tracks specifically takata blew me away i am not kidding at all bro takata is my song of the year for sure by a long shot it is incredible it is a 10 out of 10 masterpiece song it is the best song i have heard this year overall the progression of it the use of like referencing the um, takata fugue the takata organ fugue is so good in the beginning it hits so so hard the whole structure of that song it's unbelievable. It is the best song I've heard all year. Excuse me. And some have gotten close. Some other songs have gotten close. But overall, Takata takes the takes the crown by a long shot. It is unbelievably cool. So go check that song out if you have not. If you've not listened to e, uh, Mira's new EP as well, go check that out. I'll talk, I'll talk about that too. But that song is so, so good. Deluge is still good, but I think Takata is leagues above it then we get to carmen yaka a book about itself i listened to this back in april and i didn't actually put out a highlight video until after my month-long hiatus <laughs> so this one i listened to a while ago uh overall i think this album is good it is not however as good as their ep that they dropped last year ancient skills that is still their best work but this album is really solid and you can kind of hear elements of ancient skills in this album although it doesn't quite hit as much as ancient, ancient skills i think they really found their sound they found their beautiful niche with ancient skills but a book about itself is still super 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 solid there's a lot of really good tracks on here they're very very good but i just think it doesn't quite hit the heights of the ancient skills ep and i'm super excited to see where they go from here because they just put out great music even this even though i don't like it quite as much i still think it's really really good and i'm gonna put this in banger tier that's where i would rank this now after that i'm, I'm scrolling through like my youtube channel so i i'm just kind of like seeing what i've done after that i just did some highlight videos and then i had my hiatus so the last video that i put out on april 13th my next video was not well i had a little two minute update video three minute update video just letting people know that i was taking a hiatus for school and then after school came or after school finished so april 13th i had a little break and then may 17th i come back and i dropped the knocked loose you won't go before you're supposed to album reaction that one I like less as time goes on. Like I said, when I talked about Dealer, I think Knocked Loose and Dealer are kind of in that same space. I don't really like this music a lot of the time. I have to kind of be in the mood for it. I think it's really cool when I'm listening to it, but when I'm thinking about it, 
afterwards i'm like yeah i don't really like it i don't think it's gonna last much for me i would probably put this album in not bad i think that's maybe where i where i ranked it in the video i can't remember when i started this ranking but i just recently have this whole graphic thing that you're seeing now so i i just added that recently and i would put this in not bad tier i think it leaves a little bit to be desired in some of the song structure. I do think the sounds are cool, but overall, not one of my favorite albums. And it's cool situationally, but overall, I'm just not the biggest fan of it overall. I'm, I'm sorry overall. I'm going to say overall again. But I'm sorry to, to the, the Knocked Loose fans who say this is incredible. I've just never been that big of a Knocked Loose fan. I think their best work is probably the the one ep of the car crash i'm forgetting what it's called i'm sorry but that is probably my favorite work from them and even that i wouldn't i don't think i've listened to it without also watching the music video with it because the music video adds so much and the music just on its own kind of doesn't do much for me so sorry after that i listened to the gradients ep I already talked about this a little bit back when I looked and I saw the videos that I made on the singles. Please go listen to this EP. It is very, very good. It's super, super solid. New group. They're killing it already. Now they've got new members. They're a full band instead of just a duo. So please go check this out. They're going to have a bright future. Get in on the ground floor while you can because they are going to blow up. I can tell. I can tell. It might take a little bit because some of these newer bands take a while to blow up, but they are going to get big. I can tell. Please go check this out. This EP, like I said, is a banger, and it's so, so good. After that, I got a request from Zach, aka Goat Raptor, to check out Rot de Rerum Natura, and it is uh, like easy 9, 9.5 out of 10 song. It's very, very good. I think everything about it is incredible. I've listened to it a few times since then. It is one of the heaviest songs I've ever heard, and also one of the coolest sounding heaviest songs I've ever heard. It just has so many really sick sounds overall, and I'm such a big fan of it. I will talk about their other song, Death to the People, that I listen to when I get to that video, but I, I love it. I love it. It's, it's just so, so good. It's an amazing song. That's how, that's what I think of that. And then we get to the GOAT. Disembodied Tyrant Synestia, The Poetic Edda. This EP is one of the best EPs I have heard for sure, and is right now my EP of the year over Mirar, actually. And that's purely because the song structure of this, I think, is more listenable than Mirar. Mirar is very prog, and although I like their sounds, I think sometimes the sounds on that EP can get a little bit repetitive at times. I'll talk about it when I get to it. I still think it's really, really good, but I'll leave that for when I get to the actual EP. Let me talk about Poetic Edda, though. Poetic Edda is incredible. It is the, the closest thing to a perfect EP I have ever heard. It is unbelievable. It is disgusting. Each song has its own identity. Each song feels distinct. Each song has different structures and parts about it that make it feel distinct from other parts of the album, other songs. It is just overall so good. It is one of the best albums I have heard ever and definitely one of the best, sorry, EPs, one of the best EPs of this year, my favorite EP of this year, and my current contender for EP of the year. It is incredible. It is a masterpiece. And I don't think I could rank this any lower. And I was a little bit worried when I first listened to it that it would hit a little bit less on subsequent listens, purely because some of the breakdowns seem a little bit like, not to say that they're reaction bait, but they seem a little reaction bait e. but no, they are still very good on repeat listens. It's still super, super solid. Then I listened to Era Cure. And this album I feel pretty much exactly the same about from the first time I listened to it. This album, I think, is really good. It's it's pretty good overall. I liked about half of it. The other half, I skip still when I listen to it. But the six songs that I do like are very, very good. I think they are the best that I've heard from Era. And I definitely like this more than the other Era albums I have heard. It is incredible what they have done with the songs that are 
actually good on this that I like. And I wish that they had done more with the six songs that I don't like. Well, five songs and an interlude. I keep having to specify that. But <laughs> the five songs and an interlude that I don't really prefer all that much, I wish they did more because the rest of the album was so good. If it was just those five tracks, this would be one of my favorite albums of the year and I would be floored. But as it stands, the five tracks that I don't like bring it down a little bit. So that's about how I feel like this. I'm putting this in the same tier that I put it in when I ranked it, I think, which is goes hard. It goes hard. I just think the, the five tracks I don't like bring it down. And I talked about that more in detail in the reaction. This isn't the place for me to talk about that. This is just me kind of updating you guys. So go watch my reaction if you want to know how I feel. I feel about the same. I feel the same. Still a really good album, though. I've listened to it a few more times. Uh, then we get to Bring Me the Horizon Post Human Next Gen. This album, I think, is still really good, but it fell off a little bit for me. I think some of the songs don't have the staying power that they or that I thought they would have overall. But I still think it's a it's a pretty good album. It's just fallen a little bit lower for me than on first listen. I think Limousine and uh, what's the first one, uh, Utopia, are the best tracks on the album for sure. But I think overall, as a whole album, when I go and I listen to this, honestly, I get a little bit tired of it. So because of that, I'm bumping it down to Goes Hard tier. I think I put it in Banger when I first listened to it, but I'm putting it in, in Goes Hard tier. It's still pretty good. But it just fell a little bit for me. But Limousine is still one of the best songs I've heard this year. And that is going on my songs of the year list for sure. But I just don't really like the whole album as much as I did when I first listened to it. So sorry about that. Uh, n the next thing I listened to was a request from Andrew K. Balls. And it was Omega Virus, Golden Calf. This song I've listened to once since I first reviewed it. And I, I still think it's cool. It's really cool. It feels like music I haven't listened to in a while, like the kind of gent that I, I've entitled it, I miss this kind of gent. It's been a while since I listened to gent like that, and it was really cool listening to it. I just think that it's not really my thing. I would rate this song like a seven, still good, but I just don't really like the whole style of that gent all that much anymore. That's, that's my only thing. Uh, then I listened to the new single from Invent Animate Heaven or Deluxe Edition, How We Used to Say Goodbye. This song uh, got worse on subsequent listens. I got more, more bored of it on subsequent listens. I just don't understand Invent Animate because they write one of my favorite songs of all time, Heavener, the title track, and Reverie, which is super, super sick. I really like the Sun Sleeps As It Never Was three song EP. That's really, really good too. But everything else I've heard from them, I just don't like. And I don't know what it is because everyone's reacting to it and freaking out like it's the second coming of Jesus. But I'm listening to it and I'm like, this is boring. I am bored. Listen to this. I'm really sorry. I would rate this song a 5 out of 10. I don't really like it. I'm just... I, I, honesty on this channel, folks. I don't like it. I've been told I like Graveview, though, and Graveview is on my Patreon poll, so if you want to see me react to Graveview next time I throw the poll up after I listen to the, the winner, Monument the Amanuensis, or however you say it, after I listen to that, which should be soon, I might do that uh, tomorrow, possibly, tomorrow night, throw that up for you, uh, and then hopefully I get to listen to Graveview soon, because I really want to hear more from Invent Animate. I am not one to diss an entire band until I've heard their whole discography and I can give like a, a full opinion on it. I really want to hear more from them. As it stands, I don't like Invent Animate overall, but maybe I'll like Graveview. That's what people have said. So I'm really interested to hear more from that and to hear more of them. Overall, I just do not like the Heavener album as a whole. I think it is painfully mid. I'm sorry, Invent Animate fans. It does not have anything I like on it. I don't understand why I don't like this album, but other people do. I don't get why there's such a huge disparity there. But Heavener, like, dude, Heavener is one of my favorite songs of all time. And then the rest of the album, I'm just asleep. 
am like, I don't want to listen to the rest of the album, but I want to listen to Heavener. Why is this? I don't get it. I don't understand what it is about them really that I don't like. I just don't like them. And I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel like I have to apologize for having an opinion in this day and age. All right. Then I listened to the new Dance Gavin Dance sort of era without Tillian. Uh, Speed Demon and Stra Straight from the Heart. That's what it was. Yeah, I was right. Speed Demon and Straight from the Heart. These two songs are great. They're both... Uh, I, actually, I think I liked... What was the one I liked better? I actually haven't listened to them much I much since I first listened to them. But one of them... The first one that I listened to, whichever that one, I think that was Speed Demon. The first one I would give uh, a 7 out of 10. The other one I give like an 8.5 out of 10. They're both really good tracks. I'm super excited for the next chapter of Dance Gavin Dance because I am such a huge fan of them. I love their style. I love their melodies and the songwriting and the the guitars and just everything about them and even with Tillian gone and hopefully getting the help he needs because I, I I feel bad for for like everyone around him and like everything that's going on with the band and I I, I even feel bad for him even though you know he's he's got some stuff going on but I believe that he can get the help he needs and uh get get better hopefully so yeah but yeah, what what he done, what he what he done, what he did was um, a little rough. But overall, I really love the new direction. And with or without Tillian, they're still dance, gam, and dance, and they're really, really good. And I'm not going to dismiss the whole band just because one bad Apple member. They're still super, super sick. These two these two singles are really good, and I am super excited to hear more from them. And I hope they just keep going and keep pumping out bangers like this because they're one of my favorite bands. And I just can't wait for more. Then I heard Make Them Supper. Supper. <laughs> make Them Supper. <laughs> That's so stupid. I need to make this into a meme now. I need to like draw Sean cooking dinner or something like on the stove. Make Them Supper. <laughs> That's so funny. Or not draw, but like make a meme of that. Anyway, Make Them Suffer. <laughs> I wonder if this is like a byproduct of the extreme stutter that I used to have because I've been just going for like 40 some minutes right now just talking without stuttering too much in high school I had a horrible stutter like high school and before it was awful I've gotten much better at public speaking and collecting my thoughts and showing my thoughts especially through this channel if you go back and watch some of my earlier videos I stumble over my words so there's a lot more pauses but even just through the progression of this channel, I've gotten so much better at speaking in general. But yeah, sometimes uh, I'll slip up a little bit. I'm trying to say less uh and um and like, but I still do. That's just something I'm working on. But anyway, Make Them Suffer, Epitaph. This song was super good. I would give this a 9 out of 10 now. It's really good. It's more Make Them Suffer, and Make Them Suffer has never disappointed me. I think their entire discography is really solid. I, I love everything. Uh, my favorite album from them is Old Souls slash Old Souls Lords of Woe, like that, like double, I, what, what is that? What is, is Lords of Woe like an EP and they combined it or is it like a, a separate thing? I don't know. Anyway, that, I listened to that on Spotify and I love it. It's, it's very, very good. Big fan of that. Yeah. Yeah. Love Epitaph. So good. Then we get to Leprous atonement and i'm gonna i'm also gonna lump in their new single silently walking alone with this review these two songs are so so good i was not able to make a video on aphelion uh, mainly because of copyright and i got frustrated that it kept getting copyright striked because leprous gets copyright striked all the time and I kind of hate it, and I wish they didn't do that, but it's, it's what happens. It, they just get copyrighted on people's channels, and it sucks, and it's stupid, and the label sucks, and it's stupid, but it is what it is. So I put out a 18 second video saying, hey, go watch this, it's on Vimeo. In the future, I'm gonna do what I did for the Gracie Abrams album review that I did recently, and I'm gonna just publish it on my Patreon, make it public, and then make a little video on YouTube letting you all know that it's on my Patreon and it's public and you can go watch it. Just so people can still see that stuff that's blocked on YouTube. And I'm very sorry that the algorithm is like this, but it is what it is. So, sorry about that. I really like these two tracks, Atonement and Silently Walking Alone. I didn't really like Aphelion. It was too... Uh, I can't talk, dude. It was too minimalist prog for me. It was too 
looping the same thing over and over again that wasn't all that interesting, I'm sorry. But these two tracks, they had some looping, but I think the overall progression of the song was much better, and the melodies and rhythms and everything in the harmonic progression was much better than anything on Ophelian. I still think Pitfalls is their best album, it's their best work, but Pitfalls and Ophelian are the, actually the only two full albums that I've listened to front to back. I haven't heard anything from their previous discography, so if you want me to listen to that, I don't know, my Patreon's there, the album tier's there. Just a thought. I also might throw some stuff up there on the Patreon poll, but I have so many albums that are going to go in the Patreon poll queue because I can only have 25 albums on there at a time, which sucks. I wish I could just put them all up there and just have people vote, but I have like a queue of albums that are going to go on there and I can slot them in as I take albums out. All right. Love those two tracks. I think they're both like eight out of 10 tracks from Leprous. Then we get to Chevelle Sci-Fi Crimes. Okay, we're finally solidly into June. I'm, I'm reaching the end here, guys. We get to Chevelle Sci-Fi Crimes. I pretty much think that this album is about the same as it was when I first listened to it. It has a nostalgia factor, but for me, Chevelle just overall from the two albums that I've heard, Hats Off to the Bull and now Sci-Fi Crimes, overall they just aren't as memorable as some other bands and albums from that same time period that are kind of in the same genre. Like I mentioned Rise Against, Breaking Benjamin, uh, something else that I forgot in there, oh, uh, Three Days Grace. They're kind of in that same sphere. And I like them a little bit more than Chevelle overall. And I would put this album at Goes Hard tier. It's still really good. It's got that nostalgia factor for me just because it sounds like albums that are very nostalgic for me, like early 2010s. But I just think overall, it's not quite as good as some of the other ones. So that's what I think. Then we get to Ocean Witherer. This was the biggest surprise of the year, I think. Usually when I get requests from viewers or, I don't know, just, just people in general, and they're like, hey, check out my band. I'm like, oh, sure, I'll check it out. Usually I don't expect them to be anything insane, but Solitude Drowning Grip blew me away. This is one of my favorite songs of the year, and especially after listening to the song that they released before this that I'm forgetting the name of, I'm sorry. Um... Especially after listening to that, my expectations were kind of mid, and this absolutely blew past my expectations. I still have to listen to the new track that they dropped that's part of the three-song EP. Please go listen to that. They're so good. Um, but the two tracks that I've heard are very, very good, especially Solitude Drowning Grip. This is like a 9, 9.5 out of 10 track. Easily. It is so, so good. And everything about it blew me away. My expectations were like here, and they insane. Wow. What a good song. One of my favorite songs of the year, for sure. Please go check them out if you haven't. Ocean Witherer, Solitude Drowning Grip. Go listen to that song. Go listen to the new EP that they dropped as well. It is incredible. This song did not get enough love. <laughs> Please, go. Look, go. Go support them. Uh, then we got to Mirar's Mare EP. And what can I say about this that hasn't already said? It is an incredible EP. Although I think I would put it in Masterpiece tier, I think it's a 9.5 instead of a 10 Masterpiece. And that is just because, like I said when I talked about Poetic Edda a little bit, some of the parts can get a little bit repetitive. I think they peaked with Takata, and then here, it's still good, but it feels like more of Takata for me. Takata is my song of the year, and I've listened to it so much. And all of the stuff in here, most of the stuff in here, sorry, not all of it, most of it feels like more Takata, which is more of a good thing, but I want a little bit more variety just in terms of like song structure. I think I got dust in my eyes or something, sorry. A little bit more variety, um, just not even in terms of like within the genre, because they're doing the genre really, really well. It's tough to explain exactly what I'm looking for here, but they're doing it so well and there is variety in there and I love it and I think it's a masterpiece masterpiece EP but there's just something more that I want from there and maybe it's because there's no vocals that might be it because I am primarily a vocalist so I latch on most to the vocals of any song that I listen to and I think that may be why I don't like this as much as Takata I think and I think that's also why Poetic Edda takes my EP of the year over this because Poetic Edda has vocals and this doesn't. And I'm very biased against purely instrumental stuff. However, my EP or my album of the year is uh, an instrumental album primarily. So you can't, can't fault me for that. Anyway, 
that's where I would rank this. It's still a masterpiece, but it just, I, I, oh, I want a little bit more. All right. Then I listened to the new alt track, Remnant. Uh, I still am kind of mixed on this one. It's not as good as stuff like Orphan Breed or the, the EP that they put out recently. I don't quite like it as much. I think it's like a six out of 10 track, unfortunately. I've heard alt do better. This one, I think it got a little bit, like I said, there were kind of like invent animate things in there. And you all know how I feel about invent animate. So I really didn't like this one all that much, but I'm excited to hear how it sounds in the context of an album or EP and hear if it maybe hits harder like that in between other songs, because Orphan Breed was incredible. And I don't know how this is going to sound in the context now of an album or EP. So we'll see. Uh, anyway, next up was Vola, Break My Lying Tongue. I think this single was a little bit weak. I think it's like a 7 out of 10 song, but even a mid Vola is still better than a lot of other tracks. I still really like it. I think the structure could have been more interesting, but the Break My Lying Tongue, like that whole melody, <clears throat> excuse me, that melody there is still really, really good. I said this in my, in like one of my Elden Ring videos actually, but I think they should have had that build up that they had. They, they did like a build up and then it was just like, huh, and it, it didn't really build up to much. It was just like another chorus, I think. I haven't listened to the track recently, um, but it felt a little bit just underwhelming for Vola. So I'm hyped to hear I'm hyped to hear the album and see dude my stutter's coming back. I'm hyped to hear the album and see what I think of it in the context of the album. Then I listened to a couple more Opeth tracks, Deliverance and Burden. Deliverance was a little bit mid, I think I gave it 7 out of 10, but Burden was great. I've listened to that a few more times since I first heard it. It's a really really good song. I think it's a 9 out of 10 track. I'm excited to hear more Opeth. Overall, I don't have too much to say about this one. I just want to hear more from them. That's all. Then I started playing Elden Ring, pumped out a few episodes there. That kind of threw a wrench in some of my catch up on music plans. Uh, but that DLC is incredible. Then I listened to Caligula's Horse Charcoal Grace. Oh my goodness, dude. This album has been insanely growable. This album is ridiculous. On first listen, I liked it. And I, I said it was probably my third favorite prog album that I've listened to on the channel. Uh, which isn't that insane because some of most of the prog I've listened to besides the top three that I haven't really liked So it's not saying much, but this has bumped up so far. Oh My goodness gracious gosh golly gee heckin wow, bro. This album is Strong contender for album of the year. This might be like top three albums for me and the more I listen to it, the more I love it. It just gets better and better and better every time I listen to it. I'm bumping this up to Masterpiece now. This is a Masterpiece album. This is incredible. People said I'm going to love Rise Radiant and other Caligula's Horse. I am so excited to hear more of their discography because this is insane. This is... I, I, I don't have words for how good this is. But Charcoal Grace has shot up the ranks of my favorite albums this year. And it is one of the best. For sure. I did not do it enough justice in the video. I said there were some, some things I, I didn't like. Um, that's all gone. That's all. Nope. Nope. There's almost nothing I don't like in this album. It's incredible. I love it so, 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 so much. Unbelievably good album. I just, I need to hear more from Caligula's Horse. How have I not heard more of their stuff before? I even had a friend from college who's like more into like the prog metal stuff. And he's, he's like, you'll love Rise Radiant. Like, please listen to it. And I'm like, all right, I need to have time to do it. But sure, this album is just mind blowingly good. It's near perfect, in my opinion. It might even be one of my favorite prog albums of all time. It might even overtake language with some time. I don't even know, dude, but it's 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 number two as it stands. I you know what? Yeah. Yep. Yep. It happened. It's it, it passed up. It passed up Altered State for me. It's better than Altered State. It's better than Altered State. Blah, 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 blah. It's better than Altered State. It's number two. It's my second favorite prog album that I've heard on this channel. Wow. 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 Masterpiece. All right. Next up. Sorry. My nose is itchy. I'm not picking my nose. Uh, Catatonia, Sky Void of Stars. This album has also grown on me a lot. This was another Marius request. Uh, oh, I should mention Charcoal Grace was a Patreon poll winner 
from before I went on my hiatus. Anyway, Catatonia Sky Void of Stars was another Marius request. And Marius requests either bangers or bangers with time. And this is a banger with time along with Marathon Unseen Color. This is, I would put this in banger tier now. This album is so good. I think I may have given it, uh, man, I forgot, I forgot what I gave it. Anyway, whatever I gave it, <clears throat> bump it up a little bit higher. So if I gave it banger tier, it's like high banger tier now. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm dying. I'm going to take a sip of my Coke Icy, which is not the best idea right now, but it's fine. All right. Sky Void of Stars, dude. This album is so, 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 so good on repeat listens. It hits so much harder on repeat listens. I remember more of the melodies on repeat listens, and I'm like, wow, I, I'm singing along to these songs already. It's so much fun. It's just a fun album overall. It's so good. I'd put it in banger tier. Great album. Great album. Very good. Then I got a request from Mirage vocalist. Uh, I won't try to say his name again. I'm sorry, dude. I, I, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, and I don't want to say it wrong. Uh, I'm gonna say it. Nikita Zul Zulin. Ni Nikita Zulin. 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 I don't. I don't know, dude. I. I'm sorry. Uh, I talked about it in this in this video. I think a little bit, but. <laughs> He he uh, requested that I listen to the song. And I was like, sure, dude, I'll do it for free because I, I love Mirar. Uh, and he was like, no, I want to pay you. And I'm like, okay, well, I've got all these stuff. And he's like, no, I'm in Russia. That doesn't work. So we spent like an hour and a half, I think, just texting back and forth on Instagram. And eventually uh, I set up some, some crypto thing and he sent me uh, some money there and we figured that out. But it was it was hilarious trying to set that up. And I finally got it all figured out. And there, there we go. Um, but yeah, this this song, I still think is a little it, it it's good, but I want more. I feel like Octothorpe has not reached. I, I don't know if I said the name of this Octothorpe Burden. I feel like Octothorpe as a group has not reached their full potential. I feel like they have a lot of potential, but they haven't quite reached it yet. They're trying. I can feel these seeds of potential that are going to grow into something great, but it's just not quite there yet. I think they need to fine tune it, but I'm very excited for the, for the future of this project and I'm super hyped to hear more of it. So dude, don't be discouraged. Keep writing music, please, please. I, I'm very excited to hear more. Then I heard a request from Austin. Thank you, Austin. One of my newer patrons who has joined the album tier uh austin you know if you join the album tier on my patreon by the way you get an album and a song for me to react and make a video to and the song that he requested was exploring bird song turn tail one of the most beautiful songs i've ever heard i titled the video that so I, i'm not kidding like it is an incredible song it is beautiful i would rate it a nine out of ten it's gorgeous the singer in the song is a backup singer for Sleep Token. It's a very, very good track. Please go listen to it. Nine out of ten track. Gorgeous. That's all I really got to say. Then I heard Rot, Death to the People. Also a very good song. I think it's still a nine, nine point five out of, out of ten song, just like Dererum Natura. However, I like it more than Dererum Natura. So maybe I need to bump Dererum Natura down to like an eight and put this at a nine. But I like this more than Dererum Natura. It has more structure to it and i i like structure so it has more structure to it it feels a little bit more like first chorus-y kind of like song sort of thing and i like it more than derrera master actually i think it's 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 crazy good how good this song is so that's where i would put it at like a nine very very good track super solid then i divisively so heard tool schism and this one is currently sitting at 19 likes and seven dislikes making it the biggest dislike ratio on any song uh any video that i've put out on my channel so far and i'm sorry to tool fans i get that they're very influential and they probably hold a lot of nostalgia for most people but i just find them boring and like marius said in both the the youtube comments and on discord and everything i think that they have a lot of influence just like mashuga but also just like mashuga they're a little bit boring, and there are bands who are influenced by them who do it so much better, like Night Versus. Night Versus is Tool, but very, very good. And I think I would rate this song like a 6 or 7 out of 10 still. I listened to it one more time since the video, and I still think I would kind of just rate it there. Overall, it's just a little bit boring for me. It doesn't do too much. The video's weird, but I really don't have much to say about the song itself. I understand it's complex. I understand there's a lot of elements that go into 
making a song like this i understand there's a lot more of like the deeper meaning behind it but honestly like i don't care about that kind of stuff how does the song make me feel that's what i care about when i listen to the song do i feel anything and not really that's the bottom line of music for me is like do i feel these do i feel emotion when i listen to the song do i feel excited do i feel angry do i feel sad do i feel anything and not really when it comes to tool it's the same thing with invent animate and why i don't like them and era i just don't i don't feel anything i'm just kind of like sitting there like yeah this is music it's kind of how i feel about tool as well i'm sorry to all the tool fans maybe this better tool songs i've only heard this one song but overall it's just kind of middle of the road for me then i heard one of another one of the biggest surprises of this year the album floya yum i ranked this as a masterpiece on my first listen and i still think it is a masterpiece i just put out the highlight video for it so please go check that out it's it's such a good song i think i put it out this morning actually it was was it this morning yeah yeah i just put that out today uh, on the day of recording this uh this is this is the 12th uh, this episode, oh, by the way, I haven't I haven't said it before, but these Corycast episodes are going to be uh, free, not free, uh, early access for patrons of the Corycast tier. And also, if you are in the Corycast tier on YouTube, not on YouTube, don't listen to me. If you're in the Corycast tier on Patreon, you get to ask me questions and I will answer them in the next episode of Corycast. Now, nobody asked, asked me any questions in the first episode of Corycast in those comments on Patreon. But if you're watching this on Patreon, I really should have said this at the beginning. Maybe I'll put a disclaimer or something in there at the beginning. If you're watching this on Patreon and you are on my Patreon, you're in the Corycast tier. You can answer me. You can. I can't talk. You can ask me questions and I will answer answer those questions in the next video. So it's kind of like a, a recap slash Q&A kind of thing. And these are going to be monthly going forward hopefully so ask me questions but i'll only answer them in the video if you ask me on patreon so that's the point of the cory cast here over on patreon anyway floya yum incredible album i know now that this is a project between phil ex vocalist of time the evaluator and marv ex guitarist of alaska both bands that i really 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 enjoy and time the evaluator i found more recently but i've known of alaska for a while uh and i i even brought up one of their one of their album covers in one other of my videos i forgot what it was but it was like the the album uh that uh beep up, boop up, uh, it's the uh, phoenix 2017 album phoenix i think they've been disbanded for a while though so it's kind of sad but yeah overall i love this album very good very 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 good please go listen to it solid solid collab between two great people who've been around for a while in in the metal scene and it's it's just super super good it's like a pop rock like electronic album but still with real instruments it's surprisingly incredible how good this album is so please go check that out very very good then i heard the single from calandra are you ready this is one of the songs that i listened to on stream i think it was the first one i listened to in my last stream uh by the way if you're watching this on patreon on the day that this drops I'm doing a stream tomorrow on the um, uh, on on uh, on what what day is tomorrow? The 13th at 11 a.m. Central Time. So go check that out. It's another free request stream. Join up. Request songs for me to listen to. I already have some that are queued up from other people who have requested that I listen to some things, and I was like, yeah, I'll listen to it on the stream. So come join. Are you ready? I liked, but I think it's one of the weaker Calandra songs. Uh, the music video is kind of cool, it's kind of vibey, but overall the song itself, I think, just didn't capture me as much as other Calandra songs. I think I gave it a 7, and I still stand by that to this day, so, yeah. Then the next track I heard was Gia Perfect Blur. On repeat listens, I think I'm going to give it a 9 instead of a 10. I may have jumped the gun a little bit, but it still blew me away. It's still a very, very good song that I still really like overall, but I think giving it a 10 on first listen i got a little bit excited on stream because it was the best song that i heard on stream it's still very very good i i love it it's it's a great song great progression great harmonic structure great like unexpected moments in the song it's so good after that i heard boundaries death is a little more now i think this 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the these next couple albums I'm going to talk about, I'm sorry, but I th they are not up on the channel yet. So if you don't want spoilers, don't watch any further. Actually, I'm going to talk about Era Augment because that is up on the channel. I'm going to talk about Era Augment and talk about Gracie album, great Gracie albums, Gracie Abrams, The Secret of Us, and then I'm going to talk about the two albums that I haven't done yet or made videos for: Boundaries, Death Is Little More, and Dark of Starfire. So let me just start with Era Augment because that was one of the ones that I heard and I had to put that on Patreon because it was blocked on YouTube. Uh, I don't like that album. I don't like it. I don't like Era. Except the six songs off of Cure. <laughs> Hybrid Earth is a good track. The first track is a good track. The rest of them, I don't like. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry to Zach Goat Raptor who requested it. This is no slight against you, bro. I know you love Era. And for people who like Era, I'm sure it's a great album. I just... Era does a lot of things that I don't like. And for people who like that kind of stuff, great. Awesome. I'm so glad you like Era. I'm so glad you like Invent Animate. Bands like that. I just... I just don't. That's it. I just, I just don't. My tastes are different. That's all. That's all. I put this album in Not For Me, and I'm going to put it in that same category here right now. It's just not for me. That's all. But it's not, it's not the end of the world because I like an album, or I don't like an album that you like. So it's fine. It's fine though. All right. After that, I checked out Gracie Abrams' The Secret of Us. This album I gave banger tier, and I'm going to still keep it in banger tier. I've listened to it, I think, twice more maybe since then. It's still so good. It's I, I love Gracie Abrams. People call her a Nepo Baby Taylor Swift ripoff something or other because she's the daughter of J.J. Abrams, but she is genuinely talented. Her voice is so good. Something I didn't talk about in the video, though, she has a lot of like these weird voice clicky back and forth between note thingies that she does on her other album, Good Riddance. That she doesn't do much in this album and i wish she did a little bit more of that because that's my favorite gracie abrams ism that she has and she didn't do it much in this album she did it like one or two times in one song i think and i wish she did it more because that is one of my favorite things about her and why i think she's so unique and why i love good riddance as an album i still think this is a banger the melodies are great overall it's really really good but if she's a taylor swift ripoff then why is she better than taylor swift Answer me that. Doesn't make sense. All these Taylor Swift ripoffs, Phoebe Bridgers wannabes, like all these people, they're better. They're better. No, okay, well, not better than Phoebe Bridgers. Phoebe is, is incredible. Phoebe is amazing. But better than Taylor Swift? Yeah. 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 Sorry, Taylor Swift fans. If there's any Taylor Swift fans watching this video, I doubt it. But if there's any diehard Swifties watching this far into the video to hear my thoughts on Secret of Us by Gracie Abrams, it's a great album way better than any Taylor Swift song. Anyway, <clears throat> now I'm going to get into the two albums that I have heard since then that I've not made highlight videos on. So if you're watching this on YouTube, which maybe I'll have those highlight videos out by this time, actually. So maybe the spoiler warning isn't even applicable. I don't know. I don't know. Who cares? But anyway, if you don't care about hearing my thoughts on Boundaries or Darko now, then uh, keep watching if you do care and you haven't seen those reaction videos go watch those and then come back but whatever i'm gonna shut up let's talk about boundaries uh this album's kind of mid <clears throat> it's 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 mid I'll, I'll i'll put it in uh i'll put it in goes hard tier it's kind of it, it goes between goes hard and not bad for me it kind of is in between those two day to day depending on the mood I'm in. Boundaries is another thing that they are kind of in the same tier as Knocked Loose and Dealer for me that I mentioned before, where I don't really like them a lot. I'm not in the mood for their kind of music a lot. And Boundaries, I think they went too hard in this album with the chaotic stuff. And if you like that stuff, cool, but it's just not something I like. I think uh, Bearing Brightness is a much better album than this. Bearing Brightness I would put in Banger tier, but this I would put between like not for me and uh or sorry not b between not bad and goes hard depending on the day it's i i'm sorry i just don't really like this album that much darko starfire however is a masterpiece it is one of the best albums i've heard this year i listened to it again all the songs still hit so hard the album is long it's an hour and 11 minutes but it's still good it's really really good the whole runtime it's engaging 
It's exciting. There's so much cool stuff happening. They are evolving their sound. They are just doing more with their sound. They're adding in more of the ballad tracks. They're doing more weird noises. Tom's vocal flow is insane, which is my favorite part about Darko. It's so, so good. I think Oni has a few tracks, specifically Dragon Chaser and Anna, that are better than any of the songs on Starfire, but I think Starfire actually is a better album than Oni overall. It's their best work to date, in my opinion, and I hope they keep going. And they put a post on Instagram saying that they're working on new music and there's going to be new music and new EPs this year. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? Like, they literally don't stop. Tom and Baby J just do not stop making music. It's just nonstop grind for them. And everything they put out is incredible. And I'm so excited to hear more from them. Incredible album. Masterpiece. I said it was a masterpiece in the video. I still stand by that. It's, it's great. It is so, so good. And I can't wait to hear more from them. All right. That wraps it up. That about does it. The, that's everything that I have heard from my last CoreyCast video in February all the way until now. That's everything that I've listened to. And those are my thoughts. So again, if you are in the CoreyCast tier on Patreon, you can ask me questions in those comments. I will make another video at the end of the month and I will respond to your questions and I will answer those at the beginning of the video and then I will I'm sorry dude I'm like there's dust floating around my room a lot um because since the AC's broken I turned on the fan there's a bunch of dust in the fans going everywhere so I'm like my nose is very itchy I'm not picking my nose throughout the video there's just dust everywhere I'm sorry I'm sorry I have to clean my room but <laughs> but yeah if you're in that tier ask me questions I'll, I'll answer it if you're watching this on YouTube for free consider supporting me on patreon consider joining my discord following me on twitch all of that good stuff all your support even if it's just a follow or a discord join all your support means so much to me i could not be where i am today without all of you and i'm so happy that i have this little community i'm almost at 1000 subs so please go subscribe if you're not already like the video all that kind of stuff all that good stuff do all that support your boy and I thank you so much. I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.